Okey, yang lain tengah tidur lah eh. Okey, saya mulakan eh. So, share screen. Okey. Okey, tajuk uh, hari ini ialah Return to work after cardiac event. Eh, so, it is very important for OT, as an OT. You all in future and probably the uh, coming graduate, the student, uh, coming graduate graduation will uh, put it, will uh, play their roles eh, in terms of uh, uh, return to work for cardiac, eh, cardiac event. Eh. So this is my outline. Uh, first, introduction to the ischemic heart disease. Eh. So the statistic, uh, the the problem and then the issue of the people who suffer ischemic heart disease eh? and then the goals of cardiac rehab and then there is uh, evidence-based studies i i did uh, some homework uh understanding eh? the the condition of the heart and uh, what are the evidence beside the the studies eh? and then the, regarding the job demand job readiness is very important we need to understand uh, the, the job of the client and then the readiness of the client uh, themselves. Eh? And then the metabolic equivalent of task, MET. So, so it's very important for us to understand the, the equivalent, uh, equivalent of metabolic uh, regarding the task. Because when we handle cardiac, uh, cardiac patients, eh? Uh, there is certain task that uh, they are prohibited eh, to, 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 to do. Uh, so they have a study, they call it uh, MET, and then a guideline for risk stratification. So there is a risk uh, for uh, cardiac. We, we need to understand the risk. Uh, there is a guideline where what, what the, the task they are your client eh, with a heart problem what the task they can do uh, so you must understand their their risk and then uh, what we as MOT uh, can do for them uh, that is involved of fce waste and gula eh? and then um, example of work hardening and work conditioning work visit and case study eh? so when talk about uh, heart, yeah. Uh, so this is the risk. Talking about heart, uh, this is uh, from uh, American uh, uh, Heart uh, Associations. Uh, um, uh, so the the risk is when talk about the uh, heart, the risk is very high. Uh, so you can see that heart disease, the first leading cause of deaths uh, in the United States. Since the first is the first leading cause of death, eh? not COVID, eh? heart disease. But don't know because COVID recently, eh? uh, eh? recently. But the statistic, uh, statistic not there. Uh, but this one, uh, the the statistics of uh, American Heart Association, the, the heart disease is the first leading cause of death. Eh? So, uh, so one of every three deaths in the United States caused by the heart disease and stroke. Okay. So there was someone want to enter. Okay. okay. And then, uh, uh, Nanti, uh, see, you see the uh, each year an estimate seven hundred eighty-five thousand Americans will have their first heart attack. 785,000 each year and estimate 470,000 Americans will have another heart attack. So lowering your blood pressure may decrease your risk of stroke and heart disease by about 50%. If your, your blood pressure low, yeah, low lower, there is an increase uh, of uh, heart, heart disease. Yeah. There is a risk of stroke and heart disease, about 50%. So 
Sixty percent of adults don't know they are blood pressure and cholesterol numbers. Sixty percent. Fifty-six percent of uh, adults have been told by a heart care professional to improve their health. Eighty-three percent believe that heart attacks and stroke can be prevented, but unmotivated to do anything. So your client, almost eighty-three percent, although they believe they are not motivated. 99% of Americans need to improve their heart health. 99% of Americans. 72% don't consider themselves at risk for heart disease and 58% put no effort into improving their heart health. So this is the statistic in American Heart Association. So this is the nation scenario. In 2014, so this is the, the principal cause of death measure similar to the America. Eh? So ischemic heart disease was the principal cause of death uh, in 2014. 13.5%. Uh, and then um, you see that in 2013, uh, similar uh, ischemic heart disease, 13.7%. Eh? Then the second one, pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia, cerebrovascular disease, uh, stroke, and the, the, the third one, eh, the principal cause of death, and then uh, septicemia, the fourth one, and then the fifth one, transport accident. So the fifth one is a transport accident. Eh? So in for male, the number one is ischemic heart disease. How about female? Female is more on pneumonia. Uh, Females suffer pneumonia. Uh, the, the death of our females is uh, the first one is pneumonia. Eh? Okay. This is the okay. This is in 2018. Uh, the principles of deaths in Malaysia. Summer, eh? ischemic heart disease. Then pneumonia. Then uh, CVA. Then transport accident, the fourth one, transport accident, blood, eh? then malignant, eh? neoplasm, cancer. Eh? So you see that, so in, um, for, apa ni, for this one, for males, uh, unchanged, eh? for 2016 to seven, uh, 2017, uh, still uh, ischemic heart disease is the number one, eh? second pneumonia, transport accident, the third one. Or the transport accident uh, becoming the third one, and CVA, and then uh, cancer. Eh? How about female? Uh, female, uh, the, the first one is pneumonia. Uh, the second one is ischemic heart disease. The third one is uh, CVA. The fourth one mainly uh, for cancer uh, of the breast, and then the fifth uh, one is the cancer of the trachea. Bronchus and lung. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is the anatomy of uh, anatomy of the heart. Eh? So, so the red color one is the eh? the palm, the 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 blood to the muscle. Eh? Or you there yang boleh nak sampai. Eh? So you all know about this anatomy. Eh? So this is the, this more on recall. Eh? The heart disease, eh? different type of uh, heart disease. Uh, we have, they have this coronary artery, uh, heart uh, valve problem, eh? congenital heart is for the children, eh? uh, arrhythmia, eh? uh, abnormal heart rhythm, eh? and there is heart failure. The heart does not have enough strength to pump. Then there are the heart muscle problem. Heart walls become thick or heart become enlarged. So this is the heart disease, the type of disease and the, the symptom. And then this is the cardiovascular disease continue. So when people are having these risk factors, for example, hypertension, uh, insulin resistant, diabetic, uh, this, this lipidemia, eh? inflammation 
obesity, smoking, also all these the thing that continually uh, cause the disease. This is called continuum, right? And then at the end, uh, there is a cardiovascular death, uh, more on cardio cerebrovascular the, the ending, eh? the ending, the end stage will be the heart disease, brain damage, and cardio cerebrovascular deaths. Eh? So all this the continuum of the cardiovascular disease. Eh? So uh, very important, we need to understand the goals of the cardiac rehab. Eh? So the goals of cardiac rehab is to improve their functional capacity. And then to alleviate or lessen activity-related symptoms. So you need to understand the, the risk of the heart. And then you need to uh, lessen, alleviate or lessen activity related to the symptoms. Right? Then you will need to reduce disability and identify and modify coronary risk factors. So in cardiac rehab, there is an education, there is a behavior modification uh, to, or to identify and modify uh, the coronary risk factors. So this is very important. Uh, it is an attempt to reduce subsequent morbidity and mortality due to the vascular illness. So they have to reduce or modify the coronary risk. The ultimate goal of cardio rehab is to restore and maintain an individual's optimal physiological, psychological, social, and vocational status. So, uh, under this American Heart Association goal of rehab, uh, their vocational status is mean that they are written, they have to return to work. So, uh, we as an OT play a big role in terms uh, relate ourselves with the vocational status. Eh? The approach of cardiac rehab must be based on level of evidence available. So whatever you do with your case, eh, you are having cardiac event, so you must, must uh, your approach must be based on level of evidence. Eh? So what are the, the what are the goals of the cardiac rehab? Eh? To maximize exercise tolerance. So, you need to gradually uh, increase their tolerance eh? uh, doing exercise. Exercise means that uh, their physical eh? physical ability. So, when they... When they... Oh, I don't want to masuk, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. When they want to uh, return to work, sure, if they involve with the uh, physical, uh, you know, um, work, eh? some of them having um, uh, physical uh, tasks eh? that uh, they have to tolerate. Eh? So you need to maximize uh, their ability. Uh, to perform their tasks, eh? especially tasks that involve the uh, physical one. Eh? Uh, then to assist ADR uh, performance, activity of daily doing. So, uh, which stages to, 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 to conduct the ADR also very important. Eh? And then to control risk factors for cardiovascular uh, disease, eh? uh, risk factors. So, some of them are smoking. Uh, not exercise, eh? sedentary life. So, uh, so this sometimes the role is uh, uh, doing by the nurses, eh? nurses, eh? dietitians. Eh? Uh, they, so we have to work together. Eh? Then to improve the quality of life, uh, quality of life, uh, different individual, different perspective. Then yeah, it's very subjective. Uh, quality of life. Uh, for me, my quality of life that a uh, good health, eh? able to participate leisure, uh, have a sport, uh, don't have any hutang <laughs> banyak. Uh, this is my quality of life lah. Uh, happy, kan? Not under stress. This is my quality of life, kan?
depend on the individual. Uh, some of you probably uh, you, you you bought kereta mahal ke kereta Ferrari uh, due to quality of life. Uh, baik. So depend on the individual. Eh? This is very subjective. Eh? Uh, then to provide guideline for safe activity and work. So SNOT you have to give them guideline. Uh, what the activity that safe for them? What are the the work work tasks that are safe for them? So this is our role as an OT. And then to have patient cope uh, coping for that for some some of them have uh, anxiety fear, right? They have uh, depression. Yeah? They they have a fear uh, when they suffer this cardiac. Yeah? They, they, they don't understand. So some of you need to educate, manage stress. Educate them to manage stress and train them. Uh, and then uh, support them, give motivation to them. And then utilize energy conservation and work simplification. Uh, so very important. How to conserve their energy. Uh, if you conserve their energy, Indirectly is also you also con conserve your punya your punya heart eh, to work. And some of them you cannot the uh, punya MET not cannot go beyond to what because they are going to give a risk for them. Eh? So that's why we do work simplification uh, with them. We train them. Eh? We educate them. Eh? So your cardiac program include exercise training and activity prescription. Exercise training involve, involve together with the uh, work task. Uh, so some of them, uh, uh, their exercise, uh, they, they do exercise, but some of them, their punya job uh, quite demanding, kan? Their punya, their punya strength, their punya force quite demanding. Yes? So you need to train them. Then prescribe what activity that uh, suitable for uh, their apa, stages. They, they have a stages. Yeah? Uh, risk stages. They call it risk stages. Yeah? Then risk factor modification. Uh, you need to educate them uh, uh, how to handle the, the risk you need to modify uh, their habit, uh, their, their diet. Eh? Some of the dietitian you know, involved uh, eh? in uh, educate and advise them. Eh? Then you have to do psychosocial and vocational evaluation and counseling. Some of them need to do counseling. Uh, this is why vocational evaluation is uh, we, we play a big role in this area. So when talk about the program, uh, this is standard guideline in cardiac rehab. Eh? So they are divided into three phases. Uh, phase one, uh, they, they say this inpatient. Phase two, immediate outpatient. Phase three, uh, maintenance outpatient. So, when talk about programs in cardiac rehab, there is three phases. Uh, inpatient, immediate outpatient, and maintenance outpatient. Uh, so, every phase, uh, there is a objective. Uh, there is a program to conduct with these phases. Uh, so, the phase one uh, begins after acute cardiac events in the hospital. Uh, this is at the back side already, they have started yeah, the phase one. Uh, but the punya program mostly limited to early mobilization. More on early mobilization. Yeah. So this is the objective. Yeah. So in this phase one, uh, we need to assist the patient and family in adaptation to the crisis of sudden illness. Uh, this is very important. Eh? Very important. Uh, some of the 
some uh, the client eh, come from uh, rural uh, rural area kan dia tak faham uh, dia tak faham dia, dia punya spouse eh. uh, ada ada issue of the heart problem kan sebab tu husband dia getting big eh uh, lethargic or that eh. so you need to educate dia punya spouse eh. Uh, eh, to understand the situation of the business part. And then to educate patient and family about the risk and nature of uh, CL cardiac uh, disease lah. Dia punya, eh, dia punya current uh, apa ni, eh, dia punya penyakit cardiac tu lah. Eh. So you need to educate patient. You need to really understand educate them to understand the risk and the nature of the uh, disease eh? in heart uh, problem. Eh? And then to assist the patient in identifying strategies for adhering to med uh, so, so very important, uh, some, some of the rules is uh, being done by the nurses. Right? Uh, this to assist the patient in identifying strategies for adhering to medical recommendations. They have to and here uh, to medical doctor punya suggestion and recommendation eh? and then to measure and evaluate the patient response to graduate exercise in order to establish guideline for activities so you need to measure and evaluate the patient response when you do activity uh, whether they are going to follow they understand whether they want to follow or not Uh, whether they able to uh, to measure the punya heart rate, kan? You need to educate them. Sometimes when they do exercise, they have to they have to measure the punya heart rate. Whether the punya heart rate uh, pun, uh, beyond the 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 seventy percent of the apa ni, at the beginning of their heart rate, eh? initial heart rate, uh, they shouldn't go to more than seventy uh, percent of the initial heart rate, kan? Uh, so you need to measure and then educate the blood spot. Eh? To begin changing behavior pattern to decrease cardiovascular risk. Behavior, uh, bad, bad behavior, smoking, kan? Not exercising, kan? Uh, diet, uh, makan yang berkolesterol, eh? Sebagainya tu, uh, then you can learn. So the components of the phase one, you need to have uh, assessment. You have to do assessment, then uh, establish individual goals. So, so different individual have uh, different goals. Right? The punya condition, uh, heart disease different, uh, and then the punya risk also be different. Huh? So every individual have their own goals. Huh? Then develop treatment plan include uh, your graded exercise. And there is a schedule. So what exercise do you going to do? Then uh, beginning education group and individual. So ada nak masuk ni? Ya ya. Okay. Beginning education. And then basic anatomy and physiology. Uh, Recognition of uh, uh, CAD and complication and symptom awareness, risk factor reduction, rule of exercise, dietary consideration, coping cardiac disease, physical activity, including sex and medication. <laughs> so, some uh, I, I will highlight to you all. Uh, apa MET sex ni? Eh? Some because uh, at the first place. Uh, Client, apa, patient uh, have to avoid apa ni, uh, doing sex activity because the punya M MET is five above, uh, five above. Uh, you cannot at the phase one, eh? cannot do at the phase one. Eh? So you need to understand the MET uh, of the activity. Uh, when talk about return to work, this the 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 thing that we can do at phase two. Uh, phase two, we can start uh, return to work. Eh? 
So, uh, and phase two uh, involve our supervised ambulatory outpatient program. Uh, so, is uh, supervised uh, mobilization eh, involved by activity uh, as an outpatient program conducted during convalescence. Eh? The recommendation begins soon after discharge, ideally within the first few days. After the discharge, uh, you ask them to come uh, to your department uh, after uh, within the first few days. Then after, for example, three, four days, they have to call uh, to come at your department. And then you start uh, with uh, some physio doing exercise, you're doing a return to work program with them. Uh, the duration is about six weeks. Yeah? So the objective is this, the objective and the component. Yeah? To further promote psychological behavior, psychological behavior and educational improvement. This one. Ada you buat promote the punya apa, psychology, the punya good behavior, you buat promosi, yeah. then gradually increase the frequency, duration, intensity of activity. So the intensity, intensity and the frequency, and the duration of the activity will be increased at this phase two. Then you try to return them to work as soon as possible. You minimize time to return to optimal and good level. To assist the patient in developing a long-term plan for rehab and maintenance. To assist the family in identifying their role in the patient convalescence. So, family need to support. Support patient, motivate the patient. Then to prescribe and conduct a cardiovascular fitness program. So, physio we conduct their fitness program, OT. At this uh, phase two, we uh, involve a return to work program. Yeah, you can do return to work program at phase two. So, that, what is the component? Uh, this one. Low level home exercise training, telephone follow up, eh, follow up, visit weekly, monitored exercise session. And you monitor also at uh, work task, work simulation session, eh, and then education and uh, counseling, family patient support group, uh, smoking cessation group. So, in terms of quitting smoking, it's going to be good if they conduct it together in group. Then you have a supervised aerobic exercise. And then you can start aerobic. This why that's why phase two is the right uh, thing to do eh, when uh, you are returned to work for them. Uh, because because uh, apa, this together with supervised aerobic exercise training. Supplemental home exercise prescription and behavior uh, modification. So this is the phase two. And then phase three, uh, after you discharge, even you discharge them, you need to, to provide them, eh, to provide them, to provide them, to provide them, to provide them, to provide them guidance and support for continued lifestyle change. So this is more on uh, you, you apa, engage them uh, with the group. Eh? Uh, the group and then uh, after that yearly or six monthly you follow up with them. Now these people uh, it's good that they they commit themselves with club or support group activities. Yeah. So this club support group activities is to, to one is to engage them in uh, group exercise, group activities, healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Then they, if they, there is an issue, no group members can. Um, uh, can uh, uh, give uh, motivation, eh? support them, 
uh, support together. So you engage them in uh, group activities. So you can involve together with them uh, in the club uh, group activities. Uh, so when talk about return to work, uh, there is a lot of evidence. So I did my work uh, uh, in terms of uh, looking at the literature or that. Eh? So, when talk about item base, they say return to work after Kaja event is important because uh, it's not because of due to the economy. And people, even though they support the cardiac problem, uh, economy is so very important. So, they have to return to work as soon as possible. And then, uh, quality of life. When you have work, you have friends over there, again. Okay? Your life will be fulfilled with uh, happiness, uh, friendship, right? Uh, so, this improves your quality of life. Right? And then they say, an acute myocardial infarct. Right? Uh, what is myocardial, myocardial infarct? It is a uh, uh, refers to tissue death of the heart muscle caused by ischemia. Uh, that is ischemia, that is lack of oxygen delivery to myocardial tissue. So people who suffer this acute myocardial infarct, if there is no issue of left ventricular dysfunction or exercise induced myocardial ischemia, can re resume their previous work. Why? Left ventricular, uh, we need to consider left uh, ventricular. If the left ventricular dysfunction, it means that uh, left ventricular, their function is to pump, pump, uh, they supply the, they, they have to pump the blood uh, to, the, uh, to the organ, to our system. They call, that is the word for left ventricular. There is, if there is a left ventricular dysfunction, if they, they have, they cannot do exercise because of the myocardial ischemia. Uh, myocardial, there's lack of oxygen uh, uh, to the myocardial uh, tissue. If there, there is no issue of this one, uh, the left ventricular, so they, the, these studies, said that people who work at light office work uh, within two weeks of sickness absent, they can start work. After two weeks, this means that uh, after two weeks, they can start uh, their punya office work. If they work at light work, uh, sedentary work, uh, people who have myocardial impact after their sick leave, uh, two weeks, they can start their work. Uh. So people who do average manual work, uh, for example, they live only about 10 kilo, 15 kilo. Yeah? So after three weeks, they can start their work. If there is no issue of left ventricular dysfunction. So people who do this, uh, sorry, this do this strenuous physical work, uh, strenuous physical work, Involve uh, lifting more than 50 kilo, doing con construction work. Eh? Uh, they can start their physical work after six weeks. Uh, eh? So other determinants, uh, eh, other other factors that uh, they are unable to resume their previous work. Uh, probably their age. The more uh, older, uh, the more uh, the more time you take to work, eh? sex, education, previous uh, MI, eh? severity of MI, residual angina factories, eh? and then there is a poor left ventricular function and low exercise capacity. I see, this is the other determinants. Uh, eh? When they want to do, uh, when they want to return. And also anxiety and depression of post MI, stress at the workplace, motivation to resume work, uh, 
patient on perception of severity of disease. This is the, uh, the hindering part when they, we want to return them to work. Eh? Anxiety and depression. Some of them suffer anxiety and depression. So as an OT, you need to assess them whether they have this uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, if they have this anxiety and depression, you need to intervene, uh, do some intervention. If there is a stress at their workplace, so you will need to investigate further what are the things that cause stress at their workplace. And then how to manage the stress. And then motivation to resume work. If there is no, if there is issue of motivation to resume work, so you have to motivate them. Eh? Uh, patient on perception of severity of disease. Some of the disease, some of the cardio disease, eh? uh, some of them have their own perception. Probably they say because they, they get unable to do work because they don't understand the disease of the eh, the, the cardiac disease. Eh. They have their own perception, especially uh, all kampung kan sakit, jantung dia tak boleh buat apa apa. No, eh. depend on your condition of the disease and depend on the risk. Eh. Then you have to do work environment analysis, their job satisfaction, their physical burden of employment stress, and then conflicts at the workplace and early retirement. So people who have early retirement thoughts, uh, when they have this uh, disease, uh, cardiac disease, uh, their return to work, the chances of their return to work is not good. Can, uh, for example, like. Uh, they are retired, they should retire at 60, but 56, they suffer MI. But 56, they dah fikir dah nak, nak retire. So, the chances to return to work is going to be not so good. Eh? Eh? So, uh, this is a study. Uh, Arthro coronary bypass graft surgery, CABG. Uh, the study said 59 to 100% of patients return to work for post CABG. This means that uh, if you got client who undergone bypass, kan? bypass, uh, the punya chances to, to work is quite high, and right? 59 to 100%. So the mean delay only three months. I mean, you do exercise. So if you found that your case three months baru baru balik kerja, I mean this is apa within the punya mean lah. Maksudnya average the lambat tu tiga bulan. That means if you have a patient with a bypass graft surgery, so you punya timing tu, you follow up with them in phase two about three months. It's okay. So, if there is a cardiac uh, symptom after CABG, after bypass surgery, uh, there is a persistent angina and dyspnea symptom. Yeah, short of breath. Right? If there is persistent angina and dyspnea symptom, decreased likelihood of return to work. Uh, so, if you got case of uh, bypass and then they have this persistent angina and dyspnea. So you already able to predict uh, the uh, decrease of likelihood of return to work. Eh? So good effort tolerance is a positive predictive value of return to work after CABD. So if you do exercise test, uh, for example like uh, you do cycling, eh? Uh, for example, they can uh, the second they can they can uh, perform uh, do cycling uh, 543 seconds plus or minus 183. It means that around berapa ni? Lima empat tiga campur satu lapan tiga tak? So dia punya kalau dia dapat buat exercise 
dia boleh balik kerja. You able to predict. So kalau you buat apa ni exercise test pada dia orang, dia ambil masa dia, masa dia 5.43 campur 8.3. Sorry eh. Sekejap eh. Saya campur eh. Kira minit ni orang minit eh. Sekejap eh. 5.43. Okay. 5.43. 543 campur 183 jadi bagi 60 lebih kurang 12 minit. Ha kalau dia dapat buat sukses 12 minit maksimum maksudnya dia dia akan kembali bekerja. Ha, kalau dia hanya boleh buat 481 saat 481 saat bagi 60 Cuma dia boleh kayu basikal 8 minit eh, Dan kurang Maksudnya Dia tak boleh kembali ke dia So you dah tahu Kalau pesakit you macam ni eh, eh, Dia boleh Probability of return to work is lower in patient for more job involved intense physical activity So kalau dia kerja yang melibatkan uh, apa Kerja yang intense physical, physical activity Construction ke angkat berat eh ada punya chances untuk kembali kerja adalah rendah eh? coronary angioplasty coronary angioplasty ah, tahu tak ah, eh? angioplasty dia pakai apa ni dia dia ganti dia tiruan eh? ah, seluruh darah tiruan ni pakai angioplasty Similar rates return to work result with CABG Dia sama, sama dia Bypass dengan angioplasty Dia punya chances return to work Sama eh? This one They said uh, eh? Sekejap Uh, clinical randomized uh, clinical CRT clinical randomized trial study a low intensity phase to cardio, cardio rehab program that simulates element of work superior to conventional endurance exercise based and return to work maksudnya kalau you buat study uh, work ni yang simulate pekerjaan dia uh, work simulation eh, dia punya itu lebih baik daripada buat exercise naik basikal apa dan sebagainya eh kerja-kerja yang melibatkan work simulation ni adalah superior eh okey prospective course study patient below 65 with MI 37 return to work full time tu apa sen part time for one year post MI maksudnya <coughs> yang kerja yang buat apa ni full time oh, yang bawah umur bawah 65 dia punya chances untuk return to work tinggi 37% yang buat part time 12% saja so there is a prospective course study MI patient below 67 years half year post MI 35% still on leave Social and psychological factor negatively influence return to work. So yang bawah 67, uh, kalau dia setahun, uh, uh, dia ni kajian dia tu dia buat uh, setengah dalam setengah tahun buat uh, apa ni uh, apa ni rehab dengan dia orang. Uh, dia dia cakap 25% still on leave. Maksudnya 25% still tak balik kerja. Tapi 75% dah kembali begitu. Dia cakap social and psychological factors. Kalau dia ada isu of depression, fear, and tak ada family support, eh, unmotivated. Nah, chances untuk kembali kerja uh, masih lagi rendah. Eh, 25% masih lagi belum balik kerja. Eh. So depression can be predator of return to work both at full time 
and at reduced working hours uh, within 12 months. Eh? So depression. So you as an OT, you need to address this thing. Eh? Kalau dia ada depression, you can address. Eh? So before come uh, for at the beginning of the the start dia punya apa ni work rehab for you ah uh, sebelum tu you kena understand lah dia punya client whether they have uh, depression or psychological issue right eh? okay and then <coughs> some of the doctor eh, especially cardiologist uh, they having this, uh, they using this New York Heart Association classification. Uh, eh? So they categorize the punya classification into four. So you, they based on the symptoms. Eh? Uh, so they say the NYHA class one is there is a cardiac disease, but no symptom and no limitation in ordinary physical activity. No shortness of breaths. When walking, climbing stairs, uh, class one, class two, mild symptoms uh, and slight limitation of doing ordinary activity. They have mild shortness of breath or angina. Uh, class three, marked limitation in activity due to symptom, even during less than ordinary activity. So walking short distance, they are the, they tak comfortable. Uh, they are comfortable only at rest. They are the, uh, apa ni? Uh, they tak boleh buat activity. Uh, even walking distance, pun they tak boleh. Yang 20, 200 meter pun dia ada limitation. Uh, dia panggil class 3. Class 4, uh, class 4 severe limitation. Experience symptom even while at rest. Uh, mostly bed bound patient. Uh, so, Kalau ada doktor yang kardiologis dia guna NYHA punya classification, you already know that uh, yang class 1 and class 2 uh, dia punya chances untuk return to work uh, more likely. Dia ada chances dia tinggi. Kecuali yang class 3 and 4. Okay, ada yang nak masuk lagi. Adli baru nak join Moiz. Haa. Uh, Moes tertidur kan? Oh, ada tertidur Moes eh? Okay. Okay. This is the contraindication. Uh, when talk about cardiac ni. Uh, eh? Cardiac event. So this is the contraindication. If you want to have uh, entry in patient or outpatient. Kalau you nak enter phase 2 with the work, this the contraindication. You from from uh, the condition, eh? Uh, because it's involved heart, eh? So, apa dia uh, contraindication tu? Uh, unstable angina. Dia punya resting systolic uh, more than 200, resting diastolic uh, more than 110. Uh, this one cannot, cannot go to your return to work program. A significant drop, <coughs> more than 20 mm Hg in resting systolic BP from patient average level cannot be explained by medication. Tiba-tiba dia punya BP, you measure kan? Uh, ada drop. Uh, 200 tiba-tiba drop. Uh, eh? uh, and then moderate to severe optic stenosis. Uh, eh? And then acute systemic illness and fever. Eh, they are the fever, the acute systemic illness. Eh. Then there is uncontrolled a trial of ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, yeah, to uh, the, uh, and uncontrolled chronic heart failure, active pericarditis of myocarditis. Uh, 
As with the cardiologist, eh, they know better. Lah. But this is the contraindication. Eh? Uh, if they have this condition, you cannot uh, involve them with your return to work program. Eh? Uh, this is the total and unstable angina. Eh? Uh, symptom dia apa? Uh, there is a squeezing sensation around chest, choking sensation. Eh? Increase heart rate, sweating, anxiety. Uh, this is the symptom. So this one we call it unstable angina. But uh, this is the normal blood vessel. There is a atro atherosclerotic plug again. The other. Eh? So this is the unstable angina. You cannot uh, do. So you need to discuss with the cardiologist lah, eh, about this thing. Again, eh? unstable angina. Arctic stenosis, uh, this is the Arctic uh, stenosis. It's condition where due to the narrow of the Arctic bar, uh, the heart is unable to pump out enough blood that is required, uh, especially at left ventricular. There are the issue of uh, Arctic, Arctic stenosis, can uh, it? Eh? Uh, this one, the uh, ST, and it's an ST. Uh, four millimeter. Uh, ini kena tanya lah. Pakar-pakar, uh, eh? uh, kalau dia ada <coughs> resting more than four mm ni, uh, dia tak boleh. Eh? Uh, ni ECG yang normal. Uh, ni yang dia ada atrial fibrillation. Okay? Uh, so you kena tanya lah. Eh? So SNOT. Very important, you need to understand your job demand. Uh, eh, job demand, uh, apa involve, apa dia punya task, eh, whether they involve apa, forceful task, eh, involve uh, lifting, carrying, dia punya posture, duration of activity, involve static or dynamic, eh, tools, forces, uh, semua ni kena. And then, uh, you can assess dia punya psychology, eh, whether they have the punya psychological issue, whether they have a depression, they guna, they boleh guna bad depression inventory. Kalau dia 19, 19 to 63 is indicate that moderate to severe depression. So you need to address this thing. There is there is a depression in your file. This very important. MET. They call it metabolic equivalent of task, MET. So, what is MET? Is a physiological measure expressing the energy cost of physical activities and is defined as the ratio of metabolic heat. Maksudnya, kalau you buat activity, the, the energy Kan? Ada metabolisme. Eh? Metabolisme activity. You, bila you buat activity, ada you punya masa, ada guna apa, ada guna oksigen, ada bagi tenaga. Eh? So, dia ada kiraan yang tertentu. So, dia orang dah buat kiraan. Eh? You kena faham, cuma kena faham MET tu apa. Eh? The every activity ada involve metabolisme. Dia akan keluarkan apa ni, they call it MET. Eh? Uh, dia akan keluarkan energy, tenaga kan. So dia dah buat kajian. Um, so, 1 MET equal to oxygen consumption at rest or 3.5 ml of oxygen per kilogram of body weight uh, per minute. So, dia dah buat kajian. Uh, apa MET level of apa aktiviti yang melibatkan aktiviti uh, eh, aktiviti ini apa dia punya MET level so 1 to 2 apa aktiviti dia eating kalau dia makan seated uh, eating seated dalam keadaan duduk transfer back to chair washing face and hand 
walking one mile per hour. So MBT level U yang digunakan ialah one to two. Uh, sweeping floor, driving car, drawing, eh, dipping. Uh. You tengok sini aktiviti yang ringan kan? Yang tak banyak guna tenaga. So dia punya MBT one to two. So aktiviti 2 to 3 involve awak seated, seated and standing sponge bath. Uh, kalau melibatkan berdiri, uh, eh, melibatkan berdiri, dressing and undressing, walk to 3 mile per hour, wheelchair propulsion, 1.2 mile per hour. Dia prepare, propulse, proper, proper, apa ni, apa ni, tolak wheelchair tu guna tangan, uh, 1.2 mile per hour, uh, dia punya MBT 2 to 3. Dusting, using electric vacuum, preparing a meal, washing dishes. Ah, the punya MET two to three. Ah, eh. standing shower, bowel movement on toilet. Uh, climbing stairs at twenty four feet per minute. Bumpak kaki per minute. Ah, the pergerakan dia. MET level dia three to four. Making a bed, sweeping, mopping, gardening, uh, three to four. Hot shower, bowel movement on bed pan, sexual, uh, sexual intercourse, dia punya MET, four to five. Changing bed line, garden, dia buat gardening, uh, dia buat raking, swimming, swimming 20 yard per minute. So four to five MET. Sexual intercourse also, yang very high intensity ni lah. I can go to 5 to 6 ya. Eh? Walking upstairs and 30 feet per minute and eh, biking 10 mile per hour on level ground ya. Eh? Ah yang jalan apa naik basikal pelajuan 10 mile per hour ah uh, dalam dekatan data 5 to 6 ya. Eh? Uh, 6 to 7 walk with braces and crutches. Kalau jalan menggunakan braces and crutches ya. Eh? Dia punya MET quite high, eh? 6 to 7. Swim, breaststroke, ha, kalau awak berenang, eh, guna break, uh, breaststroke. Breaststroke ni, uh, bukan apa, berenang, apa dia panggil? Ha, berenang macam, kuat dada. Kuat dada. Bukan macam berenang katak. Okay. Ha, <laughs> ini kuat dada. Kuat dada ni, apa dia panggil tu, dia panggil? Uh, apa ke depan tu eh yang ke depan tu eh rasanya lah bukan yang ke belakang yeah, butterfly uh, uh, play basketball walk 5 mile per hour speed soil speed soil ni masa maksudnya you sodok uh, sodok apa tanah atau pasir tu uh, tinggi kita punya MET dia eh? so this the thing why why we want to why why we want to understand MET level because uh, because there is a risk uh, there is a risk uh, ni dia uh, ni dia eh? guideline risk stratification apa tu dia punya risk stratification dia dah dia dah stratified kan dia, dia dah kumpulkan risk tu eh? uh, maksudnya kalau patient tu dia punya apa, left ventricular dysfunction more than 50% the punya risk is very low no rest of exercise in UMI kalau dia buat uh, apa kalau buat exercise uh, eh dia punya MI uh, apa tak ada MI uh, no resting of exercise induce complex arrhythmias eh no resting or apa ni asset induce uh, unapplicated MI, CVG, angioplasty uh, dia punya fast security more than uh. so maksudnya orang macam gini yang low risk ni dia boleh buat aktiviti lebih 5 METs uh, maksud 5 METs uh, boleh buat sexual intercourse eh. Uh, walking upstairs at 30 feet per minute uh, maksudnya orang yang macam ni dah boleh buat the risk dia rendah uh, dia boleh buat apa ni return to work activity eh. uh, moderate risk uh, kalau mild to moderate uh, left ventricular function 
Ha, ini semua macam mana you nak dapat uh, EF 31 to 49% is by the cardiologist punya report lah. Ha, you faham lah ni. Eh? Nanti dia akan bagi report, okay dia punya EF 31 to 49%. That mean moderate risk. Ha, so moderate risk, dia punya activity MET ialah below 5 to 6. Below 5 to 6 apa dia? Ha, below 5 to 6. Below this one tau, uh, they still can do sexual intercourse uh, Tapi yang very level-level uh, ni lah kan eh? uh, eh? Hot shower dia boleh buat eh? uh. Okay, yang high risk uh, Yang high risk ni uh, Severe depressed LV function EF below 30% eh? Complex ventral clark atrinius Decrease SBP more than 115% Survival of sudden cardiac death, orang yang baru survive ni Tiba-tiba ada cardiac death punya attack, tiba-tiba dia survive Orang ni high risk sebenarnya ni uh, CAD dia more than 2mm eh. uh, Complicated MI, maka dia infarct, ada shock or complex uh, This is one yang high risk uh, High risk So high risk ni dia punya MET mana ya? Ah ha, MET dia lagi rendah lah. Ha, eh? So you kena berjaga-jaga orang yang high risk ni ya. Eh? So you kena apa baca report daripada cardiologist lah eh? So as an OT you have to do FCE. Ha, ya biasalah. You have to do FCE. Ha, jangan buat over testing. Ah determine set and point dia eh. Uh, you rate them, dia punya boleh balik kerja atau tidak eh? uh, Dan sebagainya, achieve apa ni uh, You all semua ni is a case study So you buat uh, activity, possible task, balancing eh? Then you recommend apa limitation dia, apa yang dia boleh buat eh? uh, see, Then you buat work conditioning, work hardening Uh, untuk dia, uh, eh, dia banyak aktiviti untuk buat ada ni program yang berkuat dia uh, contoh macam ini uh, dan sebagainya uh, ini kadang-kadang ada condition yang tak lah eh. uh, tapi inilah aktiviti yang dia buat work condition buat ada ni dan uh, you buat work visit uh, jadi penting you nak tahu klien tu ada isu tak uh, di tempat kerja kan Uh, sebab ada kajian mengatakan kalau ada konflik, kalau dia tak satisfied tempat kerja uh, mungkin ada tentu word chances are very slim kan? so you kena advise, you kena communicate dengan dia punya employer eh? dan sebagainya so guna waste ni bagus eh? sebab waste ni is from page apa ni, client punya perspektif So involve dia punya apa, physical space, object, social group, occupational form, then you boleh rating. So kalau you guna waste ni, you tak boleh lah ubah. You cuma you boleh, uh, you boleh apa discuss, advise dia punya employer. Eh, macam mana nak bantu dia punya uh, pekerja. Ada, nah ini. Uh, sebab apa daripada evidence base tu mengatakan ya uh, ada ada apa dia panggil ada link apa ni environment di tempat kerja uh, dengan uh, dengan apa ni uh, dengan apa satisfaction uh, so in term of economic so uh, akan apa ni kalau ekonomi tempat kerja dia bagus Ha, dia dapat reduce stress. So you boleh guna rula rapid upper limb assessment uh, to assess this risk, eh, risk basically economic tempat kerja. You guna rula eh, di tempat kerja. You boleh uh, ini rule of forty. So kita apa uh, uh, assess the risk. Then kita cadangkan modification adaptation uh, di tempat kerja supaya satisfy kan uh, reduce stress uh, pada pekerja tersebut eh okey yang lain ni you all semua dah faham lah eh okey ada ada apa-apa soalan tentang uh, 
pada hari Ahad ni Mana dah tidur ke aku ni? Tak ada doktor ada lagi ada lagi <laughs> Ada lagi doktor okay. Ada lagi okay. Ada lagi ni doktor Ada lagi doktor <laughs> Okey lah. Okey, ada soalan tentang kardiak ni ni? You all semua ada, ada lagi doktor. Ada pengalaman uh, dengan pesakit kardiak ni? Waktu praktikal. Ya. Waktu praktikal diploma dulu. Oh. Tapi tak ada kita dia. Ada soalan tentang ni? Kardiak ni? So, very important that uh, we understand our customer uh, punya risk tu Then, uh, jika you tahu dia punya risk and then you boleh relate dengan apa, apa risk level And then, uh, Kenapa bekas maka cita bawa keluar? Okay. Jangan rosak kaya Sebab so, bekas uh, ni dia selalu bawa pergi pergi jalan jauh okay, Sebab dia fix dekat dah bekas tu okay, apa, Satu lagi topik Memanglah hak ni tak pecah Kau huh? tanya bangkau tanya kat aku apa? Okey, apa ni? Uh, second topic, uh, second topic regarding client centered approach uh, with the first spinal cord injury. Uh, eh. So saya dah record benda tu. Uh, sebelum apa uh, hari apa hari hari selasa lepas ni saya dah buat record nanti saya upload dalam uh, uh, kat sini nanti ada kat YouTube uh, eh YouTube uh, nanti all semua boleh <coughs> boleh dengar lah hmm, okay. tak payah nak tengok muka saya ni <laughs> muka orang tua ni Okey, semua? Ada soalan? Pegang tajuk ni? Tak ada. Hmm. Okey. Yeah. So, apa ni? Kita akan buat test next week. Then, uh, another test, another week. So, apa ni? Uh, tajuk kita akan masukkan uh, 789 untuk test uh, yang apa next week. Dan uh, apa ni sepuluh sebelas untuk nada uh, week, yeah. Uh, kemudian habis. Dan uh, jangan lupa I discuss lab saya dah uploadkan lab tanpa lab six uh, dalam I discuss tu you kena respon lah, yeah. Okay, alright class. Baik doktor. Okay, selamat ya, doktor. doktor. Alright, kalau tak ada apa-apa, uh, kita kalau ada apa-apa soalan, boleh boleh tanya lah dalam apa ni dalam grup kan? Betul. Betul. Ya ya. Ah, test ya next week tu berapa hari boleh doktor? Next week, next week. Aha. Hari ni berapa hari lagi? So next week. Hari ni dua puluh dua. Next week kita akan buat dua hari lah. Bagi dia eh? Contoh macam You nak hari apa? Weekdays ke weekend? Weekend doktor lagi mudah kot Ya doktor, weekend lagi mudah Kau semua kerja kan? Ya yeah. Okey lah buat weekend lah, Saturday, Sunday Then saya akan buat announcement Then you boleh attempt dia punya test ni eh Okey doktor. Right. Okey. Okay, kalau tak ada apa-apa, uh, saya tamatkan kat sini. Okey, uh, okey good night everyone. Stay home, stay safe. PK, PKP, PKP. Okey, selamat semua.
Okay, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Terima kasih, Doctor. 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 Terima kasih, Doctor